picture comes straight from a Dr. Seuss storybook, but for one single mom, a Grinch really did steal Christmas. And Kentucky lawmakers are trying to tackle violence inside Kentucky's juvenile justice detention facilities. Plus, the wintry feel is here just in time as we head towards Christmas's home stretch. The latest on how cold coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. One family in Martin County was surprised after a Grinch stole every present under their tree. WYMT's Jordan Mullins met with the family to learn more about what happened. On Sunday, Heather Spence of Inez and her three children were on a weekend getaway to Tennessee and woke up to a surprise. I noticed my phone had camera notifications and one of them had said a movement was notified. No, movement was found in my house like at 3.37 a.m. Spence's camera detected an intruder in her home. The person seen in this photo stole all of the family's Christmas presents and other valuables. Like my little boy's dirt bike was sitting out here on the porch. It's gone. The PlayStation 4 is gone. The iMac computer, everything. And it was a tornado in here. It was, it was awful. With nothing under the tree and as a single mom of three, Spence says Christmas will not look the same. Yeah, because I, I work hard. I work 12 hours a night at least four to five days a week at the hospital. And on my only days off, I work down here at the gas station. You know, my duty is for my kids. Uh, they have only me, they only have me. And adds that this story is similar to another Christmas character. This is like the Grinch. It was like the Grinch stole Christmas. You know, they stole away my whole kid's Christmas. But she hopes for a change of heart or that her family has brought justice. In Martin County, Jordan Mullins, WIMT Mountain News. The Martin County Sheriff's Office and Kentucky State Police have confirmed that this is under investigation and encourage folks to call KSB Post 9 if you have any information. The Bowling Funeral Home in London is hosting a candlelight vigil in honor of those who've recently lost loved ones. The doors just open for folks to enter and enjoy refreshments. The service will start at 7 p.m., which will include a message and fellowship. Each family that the funeral home served will receive an ornament honoring their loved one. Funeral director Barkley Bowling said the funeral home wanted to put on the service because of the loss many have dealt with during the past few years. The Bowling Funeral Home is located just off North Main Street in London. We have a reporter at the service tonight and we'll have more at 11. London Tourism is planning a new and exciting Christmas celebration tomorrow. 160 drones will fly into the sky over London for a light display. London Tourism officials say they will take off from North Hill Street and the best viewing spot will be around Broad Street. Tourism Director Chris Robinson says this will be a show for the ages. It's something very different unique, it's family friendly, and it's uh, free to everyone enjoy. The drones will be launched at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. No weather worries out there for when those drones launch here in about 26 hours. It will be a little chilly, but no precipitation looks to be falling from the sky, and we look to stay that way for the most part, really for the next few days or so. Here's a look outside right now as the sun sets. Clouds still on the horizon at UVA wise. 43 the temperature there. The last of the sunset here as we've actually at least briefly cleared out here in Perry County. The view from Buffalo Mountain as we sit at 46. Temperatures remain in the low 50s and uh, middle and upper 40s. Yesterday's mess up the east coast. A few more snow showers to our north and west. But we're in good shape and we look to stay that way overnight. A little breezy as temperatures drop into the low to mid 30s with clouds on the decrease tonight. Details though on when we return to some very chilly air. That's in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. Governor Andy Bashir provided an update on flood recovery today. The governor announced 84 people are now living in Kentucky State Parks. That number is down from 360 on September 1st. There are 265 households in travel trailers and 325 travel trailers in 10 different locations. 
The governor said Kentucky State Park employees are working with local and state emergency management officials to actively move families into travel trailers and long-term housing solutions. Officials who head up Kentucky's juvenile justice detention facilities were grilled by Kentucky lawmakers earlier today. It comes weeks after a riot at a facility in Adair County where a girl was reportedly raped and youth and staff were hurt. Questions of staffing, low morale among workers, and if gang violence is to blame were raised in an interim legislative panel meeting today. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on what was said and if there are solutions lawmakers could begin to tackle in a few weeks. Here. Kentucky lawmakers say they have heard reports of major failings within the state cabinet that oversees the incarceration of juvenile offenders. But I wanted you to come and, and tell us what happened in Adair County and what you're doing to fix it. Incident. Uh, Kentucky's it Justice Cabinet Secretary told lawmakers the Adair County riot happened amid a 20-year-old incarceration plan that houses multiple types of offenders, violent and nonviolent, under the same roof. The youths tell our workers they're very free with this, that they're involved in gangs and that they actually are elevated in the gangs when they commit an assault on our staff or on other youths. The lawmakers say a solution is to keep what's known as status offenders out of many facilities. And the vast majority of those cases are truancy. So a kid who's been truant is in the same facility with the most violent youth offenders that Kentucky has. These are all issues that lawmakers could propose legislation for in just a couple of weeks. The next session will start in 19 days in early January. However, next year is a non-budget year, so there are questions if they could appropriate new money for pay raises, more workers, facilities, and those kinds of things. But I believe the starting pay was fourteen forty two an hour for for a entry level youth worker. I think today it's probably somewhere around twenty two twenty three dollars an hour. So we've done that inside of twelve months. Whatever the pay needs to be, it ought to be higher. Um, and I'd be I'd be in favor of, of just about anything that gets qualified people in the door. Lawmakers say they're also hearing reports that morale among staff is low, and they say they're concerned that cabinet officials have not expressed that as much of a concern. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Governor Bashir says there will be changes made to house more violent offenders in separate facilities than nonviolent offenders. The governor said previously that male and female offenders will no longer be housed in the same facilities. One southern West Virginia man is facing several charges after police discovered he is a convicted felon. Police responded to a threatening complaint at a home in Logan County after talking with Gregory Adkins. Deputies were given permission to search his home. Inside, police found five guns, a container with a crystal-like substance inside, and a clear container with marijuana. When they did a background check, they discovered he is a convicted felon. Adkins is charged with five counts of being a convicted felon and having a firearm and two counts of possession of a controlled substance. 40-year-old Casey Reed was arrested in London today after he tried to run from police on a bulldozer. Officers were able to pull the door open and remove Reed from the cab. Reed is facing numerous charges, including fleeing or evading police and resisting arrest. He was also charged with various bench warrants. A former Eastern Kentucky teacher who ran a cockfighting operation has been sentenced to 12 months and one day in jail and fined $95,000. The Lexington Herald Leader reports 73-year-old Millard Oscar Hubbard pleaded guilty to conspiracy to defraud the U.S. Court records reveal Hubbard owned a cockfighting venue in Clay County called Riverside. The venue had stadium-style seating, storage areas for roosters, several fighting pits, and a concession stand. Hubbard's sentence includes six months on home detention after he leaves jail. In July 2021, officials with the city of Whitesburg made history with the nomination of the first woman to lead the town following the death of longtime former mayor James Wally Kraft the month before. Earlier this week, after winning the election in November, Tiffany Kraft was officially sworn in as the first woman elected to serve as mayor since the city was founded in 1842. 
Letcher County Circuit Judge Jimmy Kraft, the son of the late mayor, performed the swearing-in ceremony on Tuesday night in the City Hall Council Chamber. A Supreme Court ruling on a controversial bill was decided today. The state's highest court ruled House Bill 563 is unconstitutional. And just last year, the General Assembly narrowly passed that bill. It looked to set up funds families could use to attend schools outside their districts. Donors would have funded those accounts in exchange for tax credits. The Supreme Court says that's unconstitutional because the state would be diverting tax dollars to private schools. Julia Sandor talked to those for and against the decision. The controversial school choice law, House Bill 563, was just ruled unconstitutional by the Kentucky Supreme Court. For the Kentucky Education Association, this is a win. A win that president of KEA, Eddie Campbell, says will keep public tax dollars for public goods. The legislature has a responsibility of creating and uh, maintaining an efficient system of common schools, of public schools here across the Commonwealth. And this was not just a victory for our public schools, but for the 690,000 plus uh, students all across the uh, Commonwealth that go to our public schools. But those who are for the bill feel differently. Andrew Vandiver, president of Ed Choice Kentucky, says they've done a lot of polling and they found that 70 percent of Kentuckians support school choice, which is one reason he was disappointed in the Supreme Court ruling. This was an opportunity to invest in students regardless of, of the school that works best for them. And every single state that's ever considered a school choice program like this has upheld it. So now after today, our students are going to be at a unique disadvantage um, compared to students in other states. Opponents of the bill say that it would have diverted tax dollars to private schools, but those for the bill say donors would be the ones funding those accounts. Both sides say they want to provide students the best education possible across the state. In Lexington, Julia Sandor, WKYT. Governor Bashir said he was in agreement with the decision on social media, saying the Kentucky Constitution is clear. And Attorney General Daniel Cameron shared the opposite view, saying he was disappointed and sad about the Supreme Court's decision. Well, coming up, more cold air on the way as we head into the weekend. That breakdown ahead after this, but first. Walmart employees from across the Commonwealth and beyond collected toys to ensure kids in eastern Kentucky have a Merry Christmas. 